The land is green. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Allah. The path we walk, the lines we talk, the things we see. Thank you, Allah. Thank you, Allah. Say. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Welcome again to the stories of the Prophet peace be upon them all. And we are talking about the story of Shuaib peace be upon him. Shuaib was sent to his people in the city of Median somewhere in the Jordanian Valley next to the Dead Sea. And uh, Madian was disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worshipped a tree and they were so bad when it comes to the uh, economical system. They cheated, they stole from people and they imposed unjust taxes, about one-tenth of the position of any merchant who would pass by their city. Especially they would uh, uh, harshly punish or tax those who believe in God. Shu'aib tried to fix both sides of their life. They're hereafter, they believe in Allah, they believed in the Lord, not to worship uh, an, a wood, a tree. But at the same time, he wanted to fix their economical system. And this is, this is a very great message. Messengers of Allah are not only for the hereafter. See, some people today, in the West especially, they want to separate religion from life. Religion deals only with the, with the church. What is for Caesar is for Caesar. What is for the church is for the church. This is not Islam. This is not the message of the messengers. We see in the story of Shu'aib a very clear work to fix not only the faith, but also the economical system. And we see that in the stories of all prophets. And this is our job today. We need to work not only to fix the faith, but also we need to fix life itself. We have brought, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us the last message that fixes every part of a human life. This message is so precious. It is us that we need to show this jewel to the whole world. So I tried so hard, peace be upon him. He said, oh my people, tell me, if I have a clear evidence from my Lord, I brought you signs, I brought you miracles, you still did not believe. And he has given me a good sustenance from him. Shall I corrupt it by mixing it with the unlawful earned money? Allah has given me pure wealth. I wish you could do the same thing. I wish that you do not contradict yourself. You preach something and you do something else. And I wish you would listen to me and forbid what I order you to forbid. I'm, 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 I'm asking you to do something good. I'm, I'm looking for the best of this, the city of Median and the community of Median and for those who pass by. I only desire to reform the best and uh, I want uh, the best for you. This is, the, in short, the message. The best in this life and the best in hereafter. And then he said, I can do whatever I can do. That is within my power, nothing more. I have no power over you. Allah gave me the ability to tell you the message, but he... Allah does not give any messenger the ability to force you into faith. I cannot force you into faith. Into faith. And my guidance doesn't come from me. It is not I that was so clever that became a messenger. It is only with the mercy of God that he has given me this message. Again, he's, he's summarizing to us what is a messenger. Not only him, but all messengers. They have no force, they have no special abilities. All they can do is just 
show their people with clear evidence, with clear words, what is the message, and it is up to the people whether they want to believe or not. And then he said, in him, in Allah, I trust, and unto him I repent. So, Shu'aib was very clear with his role and responsibility. He must try his best, the, mo the utmost humanly possible work. But at the end, it is in the will of God's hand. He trusts Allah and Allah is the one who can force them or guide them. We see by looking into civilizations and communities in, the, in history, when we read, we see this is repeated again and again. There are a few exceptions, but in general, the people of Madian, like the people before them, in the civilizations before them, they rejected their messenger. Not only that, they ridiculed and laughed at his efforts this is also mentioned in the Quran. They said, Oh Shu'aib, does your prayer command you that we give up what our fathers used to worship? They are asking him a very simple question. To them, it's a very simple question. And the answer is very clear also. Is the way you're praying, meaning is your religion asking us or ordering us to stop worshipping what our fathers and mothers have been worshipping? And the answer is yes. What are you worshipping? You're worshipping a tree. You're worshipping wood. What kind of human brain would accept to worship something that has no benefit or no hurt? And then they said, does your religion order us to give up doing what we like with our wealth? Are you asking us? You're asking us for economical reform. Are you asking us to stop using our money the way we wish? And stop doing laws of economy the way we wish? Yes, the answer is yes. Your system is so corrupt. We're talking about the system of Madian and we're talking about the Western system today. It's so corrupt. It's making the rich richer and the poor poorer with interest and with, with, with laws that prefer the wealthy. What are you doing? Look, few steps from the greatest wealth on earth in the stock market on New York, you see homeless people. Is that a good system? Yes, definitely. I'm asking you to change your system. You cannot do with your wealth whatever you want. You have to follow a just and ethical system. That is the message. It is not, it's not only a message of the hereafter. It's not only the message of worship God. It is also fix your life. Be human. Care about those around you, especially the needy and the, the poor and the weak. And they, when he said to them, yes, that's what I'm asking you to do. They said, verily, you are the forbearer, the right-minded. You are the only one who's in, 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 in just mind among us. You're the only one who can think clearly and think correctly. Is that what you're do you want to tell us? They were ridiculing him. They were talking to him sarcastically. They were not willing to stop worshiping their tree, their idol that they were worshipping, and they were not willing to stop the injustice and the, and the theft and the cheating that they were doing that was practiced by their ancestors. So they refused to worship God, they refused to reform their uh, economical system, they refused to listen to Shoaib in any way. They understood the message clearly, but flatly rejected it. All, nothing. They accepted nothing from Shu'aib alayhi salam and they continued to make fun of him and his righteousness. That's what they meant by saying, verily, 
you are the forbearer, right-minded among us. Meaning, you're the only clever person here? And he was. He was the only one. So he continued to call. And they repeatedly rejected his call. But he continued, never stopped. And they continually, constantly ridiculed him and laughed at him. He reminded them of the punishment and destruction that fell on the people before them. He said, oh my people, let not my opposition do not, because you disagree with me, because you don't want to listen to me, do not let that make you suffer the fate similar to, the, to those before you, the people of Nuh, the people of Hud, the people of Salih. And you know that the people of Lut are not far away from you. They were not far in time and they were not far in geography. They are very close to your area and you know their stories. Ask forgiveness of your Lord. Turn back to Him. Repent. Verily, my Lord is most merciful, most loving. He wants you to come back to Him. But they refused. So I urge these people to seek Allah's forgiveness and repentance because He's merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Glory to Him. He's the most merciful, most loving. But despite all these efforts and all these calls. They persisted in their disbelief and corruption. So I, so I warned them even further and said, and if there is a party of you, is there a people among you who believe in that which I have been sent with? If there is any one of you who would believe, and if there are a party of you who would totally reject what I said, totally disbelieve, if this is the end of it, if we are going to be divided into two groups, one following the messenger and one not, then this is in the Quran. So, Shu'aib is continuing. So, be patient until Allah's judgment comes between us. He is the best of judges. So, don't force me into your religion and I will not force you into my religion all we can do now is that we will try to convince each other but one day when the two groups are so clear and there is no one moving from one to another settled then on that day the judgment of Allah shall prevail and Allah's judgment is the most perfect most just he is the best of judges They simply did not bother at all with his message. Worse, worse than that, they weren't Shu'aib. And a very few group that followed him, they, there was very few people who followed him. They gave them a warning. The chiefs of the disbelievers, those arrogant among his people said, we shall certainly you insist on your message, insist on bothering us, insist on ridiculing our um, economical system, insist on calling us thieves and cheaters, we shall certainly drive you and your followers out, O oh, Shu'aib, or else we'll give you one more chance, return to our religion. He said, return to your religion, even though I hate it, I totally disbelieve in it. And they said, yes, you have a choice and you have to decide either to leave our city or come back to our religion. And we will give you a few days to think about it. And then we will force you and your followers into that. So they threatened to expel Shu'aib and the believers with him away from their homeland, Madian, unless they reverted to the old deviated and corrupt practices in religion and in economy.
But despite the small number of believers, although there were very few and the threat was so dangerous, they remained firm on the religion, led by Shu'aib alayhi salam. Now, how could they go back to a religion that is so obviously just mad? Worship a tree? And how would they go to a way of life that is totally unjust? They said, Shu'aib and his followers said to their people, We would have invented a lie against Allah if we return to your religion. If we say this wood deserves to be worshipped, this is a lie. After all, Allah has rescued us from this worship. It is not for us to return unless Allah, our Lord, should will. Our Lord comprehends all things in His knowledge. In Allah, we put our trust. You're threatening, threatening us. We cannot stop you. You're too numerous for us. But we are weak in numbers, but we are very strong because our trust is really in Allah, in God. Our Lord shall be the judge between us and our people in truth for you. Our Lord are the best who give judgment. Shu'aib and the believers supplicated and prayed and prayed and prayed to Allah to decide between them and their people because they were threatened to be expelled. Again, the people of Shu'aib, especially their leaders, did not hinder their warning. They insisted on the warning. The chiefs of those who disbelieved among his people said, and this is in the Quran. If you follow Shu'aib, be sure then that you will be the losers. Meaning, you will be expelled with nothing. You cannot take anything with you. Those leaders decided on this because of a reason. They felt that the message was strong. Shu'aib was so convincing. And they were afraid that the people of Madian, with time, would follow Shu'aib and that they would lose their leadership. It's all about leadership and life and uh, power and influence. It's all about that. So they decided not to give him the chance even to call. But in addition to rejecting Shu'aib and his message, of the one God, they also rejected any reform in their economy, any reform in their unjust system. They knew, but they, they it was so benef beneficial for them. They made, it made a lot of money. This cheating and theft made a lot of money to them. And then they said to Shuaib, this is also in the Quran, you are only one of those bewitched. Now, they're, they're changing their words now. That they were afraid that their people would be affected by him. This is a, a witchcrafter. This is a magician. Don't follow him. And then they said, this is, he's saying he's a messenger of God. In the Quran, they said to him, you are no more than a mortal like us. You're just a human being like us. And indeed, we think that you are a liar. Now, if you are telling us the truth, then we challenge you. We challenge you, and this is their challenge mentioned in the Quran. We challenge you to cause a piece of the sky to fall upon us if you are truthful. So they accused him of being a witchcrafter, a magician. They publicly proclaimed that he is a liar, and they challenged him to disprove it by causing a piece of the sky to fall upon them. Meaning, if you're threatening us, threatening us with the punishment of your Lord, Allah, then do it. Then do it. We're not afraid of that. So it was total rejection, false accusations, same like what the people of Ad and the Mood and the people of Lut and Noah, it's the same like the people before them have done. 
So, we come to the same stage. They rejected. They threatened Shu'aib. They asked for the punishment of Allah to fall upon them. And they were ready to hurt Shu'aib and his followers. With these, usually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interferes. As long as there is hope, they will be given a chance. But now they are challenging Allah. And they are refusing anything. And they are threatening the Prophet himself and his followers. Now, Allah supports his messengers. And we see the end of the people of Shu'aib in our next episode, inshallah. Thank you for following. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you.